Matthew chapter 27 verse 44. The robbers who had been crucified with him were also insulting him with the same words. Luke chapter 23 verses 39 through 41. One of the criminals who were hanged there was hauling abuse at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other answered and rebuking him said, Do you not even fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. John chapter 19 verse 34 But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ and television viewing audiences, this is the 14th session of the message of the cross. In the last session, I told you about the providence in Jesus' crucifixion in which he was nailed through his hands and feet and his clothes were removed. The reason why Jesus was nailed through his hands and feet was to redeem us from the sins that we commit with our hands and feet. If we don't have hands and feet, we would not sin. If Jesus had not shed his blood being nailed on the cross, we would not have been forgiven of our sins even if we repented. We would have had to cut off our hands and pluck out our eyes if we commit a sin with our hands or eyes. If we committed adultery or idolatry, we would have had to be stoned to death according to the law of the Old Testament. But if we just truly repent deep in our heart and turn from our sin, we are forgiven of all sins by the blood of Jesus. How thankful it is if we remember this love of Jesus, we can only love the Lord more and more. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will remember this love always and dwell only in the light. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, because Jesus shed his blood, was cursed and hung on a tree, we who believe in this are forgiven of our sins and are set free from all the curses of the law. Those children of God who believe in Jesus as their Savior and accept Him are set free from disease, infirmities, poverty, and all other kinds of disasters. Therefore, those who have accepted the Lord and are living according to God's Word are always protected. Even if we live by the Word, trials and tests still come, but they are tests for blessings. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. So if you overcome the trials with thanks and joy, God will acknowledge that you have overcome with your thanksgiving. The later part of the scripture says, For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Also, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 says, Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In a situation where you face hardships acting in righteousness or for the name of the Lord, if you accept them with thanks, you will receive spiritual and material blessings. And if you face tests and trials because you did not live by the word of God, what should you do? In this case, you can just repent of your wrongdoing and turn from them. Of course, there are conditions here. I always told you those things. When those who are at the first and second level of faith commit sins, there are sins that can be forgiven if they repent. At the third level of faith, there are sins that they must not commit. At the third level or higher, there are sins that lead to death and other sins that do not lead to death. 
God tells us not to pray for those who commit sins that lead to death. If you are at the third level of faith or higher, you know what sins that lead to death are. If people willingly commit these sins, they will not be saved, so God is telling us not to pray concerning them. If you are already at the third level of faith or higher, now you have relatively strong faith, so how can you commit sins that lead to death? If you first break the wall of sin and pray with faith, the trials will leave you. But in some cases, you might face difficulties because of people's mistakes, although you did not commit a sin. Even in this case, if you rely on God, He will work according to your faith. For example, on October 3, 1994, Pastor Young Shi Kang, one of core pastors of Manmin Jungang Church, hit an excavator by a mistake while he was driving. In this accident, his car was so badly damaged that it had to be scraped. He barely escaped through the window, but his neck was seriously injured. Because the cartilage on his throat was shattered, if he was not operated upon, his death was 100% certain. Because the bone that blocks the esophagus while breathing and the airway while eating food was completely broken, air was going into his body while breathing. But when he would swallow, it blocked the airway, so he would have suffocated to death. Furthermore, doctors said that after operation, he would not be able to speak, but he did not receive any medical treatment. He left the hospital the next day to come to me and receive my prayer. Then he began to recover, and after three days, he was able to eat. On the seventh day, he felt a tickle in his neck and coughed, and a broken piece of the bone came out amazingly. Surgeons would have had to cut his throat. would have had to cut his throat and take out the broken bone piece, but God made it come out naturally. After that, he recovered, being able to eat solid food and meat. Since then, he has been doing his ministry without any problem. Dear viewing audiences, in case of little babies who cannot show their faith, what should you do? if they get sick or are involved in an accident. In these cases, they can experience God's works by the faith of their parents. Once, a big grape went into the airway of a two-month-old baby and his situation was critical. The grape is called the gobong in Korean, which means big grape because it is really big. The grape went into his lung and blood was pooling in the lung so he could not breathe. The doctors said he had no hope and they could not even operate on him since he was too young. Finally, oxygen supply to the brain decreased and there was a problem in his brain. They said even if he survived, he would not grow up normally. Cells will die if oxygen is not supplied. In this situation, his parents decided to rely on God. And first of all, they repented of not having lived according to God's word. Then after they received my prayer that is recorded in Telephone Automatic Response Service, the ARS, the baby began to recover very quickly. The baby, who was waiting only for death in the intensive care unit, was released from the hospital after a week. A couple of days later, they took an x-ray picture and the parents and the doctors were surprised once again. The baby had no problem with his brain, and the grape in his lung was completely gone, even its seeds. The Almighty God destroyed it with His power. Dear brothers and sisters, likewise, those children of God who believe in the Lord, if they pray with faith, can receive the answers and blessings in the name of the Lord who redeemed us from our sins. But the greatest blessing of accepting the Lord is that we are going to the kingdom of heaven, not hell. Hell is such a dreadful place. Mark chapter 9 verses 48 to 49 says, Their worm, 
does not die, and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. This describes what kind of punishment will be received by those going to hell. Everyone there will be salted with fire. I saw a vision before in which souls in hell were twisting their bodies as if they were dancing very hard. Just as salt pops up on a hot pan, they were jumping and twisting their bodies because of the pain and heat of the lake of fire. There is not only lake of fire, but also lake of sulfur, which is seven times hotter than the lake of fire. The lake of sulfur is for those souls who commit graver sins than those who are in the lake of fire. The souls in the lake of sulfur were not either jumping or screaming. The pain and agony was so intense that they could not even move their bodies or make any sound. The souls in hell suffered eternal punishment without any rest in the lake of fire and sulfur, and they cannot even die even if they want to. Therefore, the Bible says it is better for us to cut off our hands and feet so that we will not sin and not go to hell. Not long after the opening of our church, God showed me the lake of fire in hell and the fire of sulfur. There is a very large lake of fire. In places like the Galilee prayer house, we can see the mist often in the morning. The water evaporates from the lake and it forms fog that covers the lake. It is such a beautiful scene. I am able to see it often. However, uh, let us say there is a very thick fog. When there is thick fog, Airplanes cannot take off or land. Mentally picture this. Now, in this kind of scene, picture only the heads that can be seen endlessly. Those who are in the lake of fire are seen from their chest and up. They seem to be dancing somewhat as if in nightclubs. They dance and shake their bodies in dark places with many lights. Please understand, however, that this is not good. It is just somewhat like the situation. Because it is so hot, their bodies violently twist. Their entire body writes in pain like that. But in the lake of sulfur, people are in it up to their neck. There, they cannot even twist their bodies or make any sound. In the lake of fire, they can at least scream. But in the lake of sulfur, they cannot even scream because it is just too hot. Suppose you are being tortured. Then you can scream when the pain is bearable. If the torture is really unbearable, you can only grin. They cannot even scream in the lake of sulfur. I do not know whether they are twisting their bodies or not because they were visible only from neck up before. I thought they couldn't even twist their body because it was too hot. But now I think that maybe they are twisting their bodies but it was invisible since their bodies are obscured in burning sulfur. Anyway, I couldn't see them twisting, but for sure they cannot scream due to excruciating pain. This goes on forever and ever. It will not end after billions of years. They will have to suffer endlessly in the fires of hell. 
But the punishments described in the book Hell are actually easy ones. Then when will the eternal punishments of fire of hell be decided for each soul? It is all in the book Hell. There will be a seven-year great tribulation, and after that, there will be the Millennium Kingdom on this earth. After the Millennium is over, there is the Great White Throne Judgment. They will receive the Judgment at the Great White Throne Judgment and be thrown into Hell. They will suffer in the lakes of fire and sulfur forever. Until then, they will receive punishments that are explained in the book Hell. But in the Hades, before they are thrown into Hell, they have some kind of rest. Let's say a married couple receives the same punishment. If the husband is being tortured, his wife has some rest watching it, but she would just not watch it. She would curse at her husband saying that she went to hell because of him. So they can have at least a few seconds of respite. But those who are thrown into the lakes of fire and sulfur will not have any rest forever. If you have received an injection to get better or applied an ice pack to relieve pain, you can understand. You feel much better if you are relieved from pain for a couple of minutes rather than receiving the pain constantly. It is much better to get a break from it. And there is no rest whatsoever in the lakes of fire and sulfur in hell. But among those who have seen hell by God's grace, some say they saw different kinds of punishments than the lakes of fire and sulfur. They say they saw people suffering from snakes coiling around the body or eagles pecking their eyes. They saw people receiving tortures with spears, swords, and needles. But the Bible definitely says hell is the lake of fire and sulfur. Therefore, the place where other kinds of punishments are given is Hades. Hades is the place where the dead souls who are not saved will be waiting until the final judgment, which is the great white throne judgment. This place also belongs to hell in a broad sense, and the pain is intense, but it is not the true hell. Those souls who receive punishments here before the judgment will go into the lake of fire or sulfur after the judgment. The pain of the punishment in the lake of fire and lake of sulfur cannot be compared to the punishments in Hades. If you know the fear of hell, you will confess from the depth of your heart that it is much better to cut off your hands and feet than to go to hell. When I came to know about this fearful hell, I made up my mind again and again saying, I should not let any of our members fall into this hell. Also, because I feel very sorry that so many souls around the world are going to hell because they do not know the truth, I have been trying my best in the world mission to save even one more soul. Thankfully, those of you who have met and accepted the Lord can be forgiven of your sins through the sufferings that Jesus took on the cross, and you will be able to go to the kingdom of heaven. But it is not that you can be forgiven by just confessing with your lips, Lord, I believe. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light as He Himself is in the light, namely our Father God is in the light and here, light means the truth and goodness itself without any evil at all. And we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus His Son cleanses us from all sin. In this verse, you can see that there is a condition to be met 
to be forgiven our sins. The condition is that we have to walk in the light. Nowhere in the Bible, including both Old and New Testaments, does it say that we can be saved even though we continue to commit sins. What God, the prophets, Jesus and Jesus' disciples teach is that we have to cast off our sins and become holy. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Only when we repent, leave sins, and try not to commit sins again and live in the light can we be forgiven of our sins by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah! The Almighty God of love, lay your hand on all your children, on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleanse with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five versera and the six entrails, each joint and all nerves, tissues and cells. Manifest the most high part of creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria and weaknesses go away. All contagious diseases go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases, and newly discovered diseases, be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer, age, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbago, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness, and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nervous breakdown and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the most high power of creation, may all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive. Rejoin broken bones. And make perfect and whole all burned parts of the body. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away, and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil and wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging and deceiving spirits be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened. Darkness go away. May the light come. Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them the strength to call out to you. Give them the strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them, answer the desires of their hearts, imploration and prayer. Add faith, hope, and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters, 
and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out, and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding, and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do in life. Manifest your work so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God, I have received his answers and I have received God's blessing. Father God, I thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.